Hey study buddies, and welcome to another episode of Scarlet Studies, where I do the homework that you don't wanna do. Today we're talking about space. There are so many things we don't know about space. How big is it, really? Who else is out there? And what does it all smell like? Out of all five of our senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, I bet most of us think that smell is the least important, but the smell of things can actually teach us so much about them. And when it comes to something as mysterious as space, every detail, even smell, is so important. So how do you smell space, exactly? Well, first of all, astronauts really can't smell or taste much of anything their first few days in space. And this is because of gravity. Gravity plays a part in everything we do, even in how we eat and smell things. If there's no gravity, a lot of like liquids get stuck up in your sinuses. But once their bodies adjust, they can smell things. And when they do, they all report the same strange space smell. Now the thing is, you can't smell space directly. You can't just stick your head outside of a spaceship and get a big whiff because you'll die. You cannot survive in space without a space suit. Space is what's called a vacuum, meaning that it has very, very low pressure. Here on Earth, you experience various different levels of pressure depending on the altitude of where you are. The higher you get, whether it's in a hot air balloon, an elevator, or even just a hike to the top of a mountain, the higher the altitude and the lower the pressure. This is why planes have to pressurize the cabin that you sit in, because they reach such a high, high altitude. You might notice that when you change altitudes pretty quickly, your ears might pop. This is because the air pressure inside your ear has to adjust to the air pressure outside of your ear to keep your eardrum protected and to keep you comfortable. If planes didn't repressurize their cabins, you would feel really icky. Even here on Earth, some people experience something called altitude sickness if they spend a lot of time in a place that has a very different altitude than they're used to. So the moral of the story is astronauts have to wear space suits which are pressurized to keep them safe and comfortable. So nobody has actually smelled space with their bare nose, but they have smelled space indirectly. When astronauts on the International Space Station come back in from a spacewalk and take off their helmets, they all report the same peculiar smell lingering on the fabric of their suit and on the tools that they might have been using when they were outside of the spacecraft. The smell kind of sticks to them the way a campfire smell kind of sticks to you even after you're done camping. They've described it as various things, from sizzling steak to hot metal, welding fumes, even gunpowder. After realizing that all of their astronauts were talking about this strange steak, smoky, hot smell, NASA actually developed a synthetic version of that smell to give to astronauts in training so that they'd be prepared for it once they got to the space station. There for a little while, you could even buy bottles of space smell for yourself. It kind of makes sense to think of space as a campfire, doesn't it? The Big Bang Theory, which is the current theory about how the universe began, tells us that the whole universe started with something very small, very hot, and very dense. Dense because it was chocked full of every bit of matter that would ever exist. From the particles of hydrogen in our oceans, to the particles of aluminum in the tin foil on your leftovers, to even the particles of carbon inside of you, once upon a time it was all smushed into one tiny particle, and 13 billion years ago it either exploded or started to stretch really, really rapidly, and it's still stretching today. So no wonder space smells a little smoky. It's like a kitchen. Things were really cooking 13 billion years ago. So now the question that I always want to know is why? Why does it smell like this very, very specific smell anyway? Well, one explanation is a chemical process known as oxidation. Oxidation is kind of like burning, but with no fire and no smoke. 
Remember how airplanes pressurize their cabins? Every time an astronaut goes out and comes back in, they are held in this little repressurization room where everything has to be repressurized for them so that they're very, very safe. And every time they do that, they bring particles in or out. So let's say that a few little particles of oxygen hang onto the astronaut's suit, and when she comes back inside to this airlock to get repressurized, they combine with O2 to make something called ozone. And it might be this that the astronauts are smelling, this kind of burned oxygen particle ozone smell. Another cooler explanation is that this smell is actually the smell of dying stars. So stars live for various lengths of time. It kind of depends on how big they are. Our sun is a star and stars of that size live about 10 billion years. Don't worry, we're just at about 4.6 billion years so far. But a star that's say 20 times as heavy as our sun only lives about 10 million years. Stars begin their lives as dense clouds of gas and dust. And once it forms, it burns hydrogen and helium. And once the hydrogen runs out, it starts to burn more of the helium, and then that creates heavier chemicals, and then the star just gets heavier and heavier and denser, and then when it dies, it eventually becomes either a white dwarf or a supernova. And you can imagine that when something that giant, that old, that hot and dense dies and explodes, it's gonna release a lot of weird smells. Dying stars create compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, also known as PAHs. And when these PAHs float around the universe, they help create things like comets, planets, and stars. They essentially are the stuff space is made of. We even have some of these PAHs here on Earth. You can find them in coal and oil, sometimes even in some of the foods that we eat. They have very high energy vibrations, and so that means that when they combine with our air, they might be responsible for some really weird smells and tastes. That's right, folks. Not only does space have a smell, it also has a taste. You probably thought it didn't taste or smell like anything, right? And the people who've discovered the taste of space actually aren't astronauts. They're astronomers. Astronomers have a slightly different job than astronauts. Sometimes they never go to space. Actually, most of the time they don't. They do their work here on Earth. They spend their time searching through thousands and thousands of signals from all over the universe, sent back to Earth by rovers on planets, satellites, various spacecraft that float around the universe, sending us data. One of the places we get information from is a giant dust cloud at the center of the Milky Way galaxy galaxy called Sagittarius B2. Come through Sagittarius, where are my Sagittarians at, hey? I'm a Taurus, I don't really think anything's named after me. Anyway, in the middle of Sagittarius B2, astronomers have found a chemical called ethyl formate, which is the chemical responsible for the taste of, wait for it, raspberries. That means that space smells like a cookout and tastes like fruit salad, <laughs> delicious. When ethyl formate was found, astronomers were actually looking for something else. It was an accident. They were looking for amino acids, which would indicate a strong possibility for other life within our galaxy. They didn't find any amino acids in the Milky Way yet, but there's still a chance we might find it anywhere else in the universe. And astronomers actually think they're getting pretty close. Remember, the Milky Way is just one galaxy. And even though it's many light years across, the known universe is comprised of billions of other galaxies. Some of them are 10 times the size of ours. And the crazy part is it just keeps expanding and stretching wider and wider. There really is no center and there is no edge. Can't even wrap my brain around that. And within those billions of other galaxies, there are trillions of stars and plenty of other planets to explore. And they might all have their own unique smells, tastes, even life forms. Only time will tell. So what did you think space was gonna smell like? Did you have any theories? Are you surprised? Would you rather it smelled like something else? Would you ever wear a perfume or a cologne made to smell like space? B says that she would. Would you? Guess that's what I'll get you for your birthday. 
Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching Scarlet Studies. I need more things to study, I'm running out. So what are you studying right now? What can I help you with? Any research you need me to do for you? And I'll see you next time, study buddies. To infinity and beyond. Bye.